The video you are about to watch was filmed earlier this week before the Josh Reynolds signing. So when we get to the wide receiver stage of the depth chart, we've updated it to include Reynolds, but obviously old me didn't know that Reynolds would be signing with the team before I had some PTO pop up. So enjoy the video, but I'm sorry for the uh, slight confusion about Josh Reynolds. Coming up on today's show, we're going to run through the updated depth charts for the Broncos following free agency and going into the NFL draft. Now, full disclosure, I'm filming today's video on Monday. I've got some PTO later in the week. A friend is coming in town, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, so I'm filming this video ahead of time. And fingers crossed for my selfish reasons, there are no more signings between now and the release of this. If there are, just kind of keep that in mind. But let's get into it, starting with the quarterbacks, which... It's hardly plural. It's Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci, and that is all. I am confident we will have an addition, whether that is the draft and free agency or just the draft and hopefully not just free agency, but there is definitely an extra arm or two that needs to be added to that quarterback room. Free agency is not the place to do it. If you're actually looking for a legitimate starter or at least real competition, you're not going to find it in free agency. Ryan Tannehill would be the best of the bunch, but he played so bad last year for Tennessee, and it's been bad for a few seasons now. Blaine Gabber, didn't he retire, I think? Uh, Jeff Driscoll, gross. Matt Barkley, Brian Hoyer, you want to run back with Trevor Simeon? Carson Wentz may be the best of the bunch, actually, and that's never a good room to be in when Carson's the best quarterback. So, it's not going to be in free agency for actual competition, which means it's likely going to be the draft. And I don't think Denver is going to have the ammunition to move up and get J.J. McCarthy, and I don't think he'll fall to the Broncos at number 12, which is why I have one quarterback on my radar, Bo Nix. Not because I would go draft him, but I'm trying to figure out what Sean Payton would do. And I think Bo Nix is this year's Will Levis, this year's Malik Willis, of a guy that gets some first-round buzz that does not go first round. And I don't think Bo Nix will be first round. Could be round two, could be round three. Now, Denver does not pick again until pick 76. But last year, we saw them give up a future pick to trade up and get Riley Moss. So what's stopping them from giving up their third-round pick this year, maybe a fifth, which they have three of, and a future third-round pick to move up towards the end of round number two if Bo Nix is still falling? I think that is a much more likely solution to the Broncos' shortage at quarterback. Now, what I want to know from you guys is this. Which quarterback do you not want the Broncos to draft? Personally, I'm not high on Bo Nix at all. I would much rather have Michael Penix. I think people fall victim to the length of the NFL offseason, and we forget just what we watched in the fall, which was Michael Penix just fucking tore it up. And Bo Nix just checked it down every single play. So, yeah, give me Michael Penix over Bo Nix every single day. On to the running back room. Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin, Samaj P. Ryan are your top three backs. I think it's a solid committee with Javante two years removed from his injury and entering a contract season. Why do I smell a big breakout year for Pookie? Uh, as for the wide receiver room, you move down from Jerry Judy. So here's how the room looks now. Cortland Sutton. Marvin Mims, Tim Patrick, I think these are your top three receivers. You've got some good depth, though. Like I like little Jordan Humphrey and Brandon Johnson, two players that have played very well for Denver the last two seasons or so when called upon. So the big question mark, though, is Marvin Mims. Like, Is he going to have that breakout year that Denver kind of desperately needs? Because if you're thinking about the Broncos, excuse me, the Broncos' like needs going into the draft, they're probably not going to go wide receiver at pick number 12. If they don't go quarterback there, then I have to imagine round number three will be a quarterback. So all of a sudden, you might go the first two days of the draft without drafting a new wide receiver, and you can probably afford that if you get really good play out of Mims. So I think he is a sneaky X factor for this team's success in 2024. On to the tight end room. It is Adam Troutman, Greg Dulcich, Lucas Kroll, Three extremely mid tight ends for different reasons. I think Trotman has shown he can be a reliable blocker and he's got some pass rush upside. Greg Dulcich is good when he's healthy, but that is very rare. And Lucas Kroll, I think, had some good play down the stretch, but 
I don't think anyone can pound their table and say he's going to be this team's leading tight end. So definitely uh, leaving me wanting more with this room right here. Now onto the offensive line. Garrett Bowles, Ben Powers. I've got Alex Forsyth as this team's starting center. I think it's going to be a training camp battle to watch for between him and Luke Wattenberg. Two day three draft picks. Forsyth out of Oregon, round seven last year. Wattenberg, I think out of Wisconsin, oh no, out of uh, Washington, the draft prior in round five, round six. So those are two guys duking it out to replace Lloyd Cushenberry. George Payton said, we feel confident in Forsyth to be a starter in this league. Didn't say Luke Wattenberg by name in that same quote, which is why I'm going with the former seventh-round pick out of Oregon. Quinn Miners is awesome. He's an all-pro in my eyes. Mike McGlinchey at right tackle. Just need him to play half of what he's getting paid to play, so just a little bit better from last season. They also added Matt Peer, former third-round pick out of UConn, to be the Cam Fleming swing tackle replacement, and that's probably a much better role for the former New York Giant. Ultimately, this offensive line is probably not top five in the NFL. It's definitely not bottom five, though. I think it's right there in between 10 and 20, and it's probably not going to be the ultimate difference maker in whether or not Denver is successful next year. But whoever's playing quarterback, they will be stepping into at least a half-decent situation because it's not a bunch of plumbers playing tackle and guard for them. Like They've got some real offensive linemen up front that are highly paid and also highly drafted, and they play like it. So I like this offensive line. The only question mark I have is the center position. Now, before we get to the defensive side of things here, help us reach 22,000 subscribers by the time the NFL draft kicks off. We're a little over 2,100 right now, so chip, 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 chipping away, baby. Be a part of the fastest-growing Broncos YouTube community out there. Defensive line, I've got my concerns. Zach Allen, that's fine. DJ Jones, he's the best of the bunch, but the bunch suck. Malcolm Roach comes over from New Orleans. It's another one-way ticket from NOLA to Denver to follow Sean Payton. He was a good-ish run stopper last year, but like he's been a backup defensive tackle his entire career in New Orleans. And all of a sudden, he'll be tossed into a starting role, which desperately needs some improvement after last year, where the Broncos were a bottom three team against stopping the run. And they haven't really made a whole lot of strides to improve that area. I mean, you can look at the 2023 run defensive numbers for yourself. 30th in yards allowed, 32nd in yards per carry, dead last, tied for 30th in 20-plus yard runs, give up the most 40-plus yard runs last year. Like This is a major area for improvement, and I don't think Malcolm Roach is going to make a big dent in it. On to the linebacker room. Jonathan Cooper, Alex Singleton, Cody Barton comes over from Washington after starting his career off in Seattle, I've got him penciled in as the starter ahead of guys like Justin Stranad, Jonas Griffith, and Drew Sanders. Not really sure what they really want to do with Sanders. I don't think Denver knows what they want to do with Drew Sanders just yet. Outside or inside linebacker. And then Baron Browning ahead of Nick Benito. So a couple of Ohio State Buckeyes coming around the edge. The um, you know, I wouldn't say the X factor, but just another key part of this team's success in 2024 probably lies in those three pass rushers, right? Cooper, Benito, and Browning. We're looking at a seventh, a second, and a third round pick here. So not incredible investment. Benito, the earliest of the bunch, and that was the final pick in round number two, 64th overall via the Rams from the Von Miller trade. So for me, looking at this room, I think it's a good room, and that's kind of been my mantra all offseason. Is it the best pass rushing unit? No, it's not even close. But I don't think it's the worst in the NFL. But I do think this is an area where Denver can definitely afford to add a little bit more through the draft. On to the cornerbacks. Patrick Sertan, he's locked down. He'll take care of 50% of the field. Riley Moss, he has some question marks. Jaquan McMillan was the turnover man last year, but it's hard to have consistent takeaways from year to year to year. Like, go look at some of the NFL interception leaders and just see how they have, like, like Xavier Howard had 10 picks one year. Next year, I think he had like zero or one. So you can quickly fall off the mountain. But Riley Moss is the name on screen that I think, you know, diehards are really talking about here. Is he ready to be a starting cornerback in this league? I don't know, but I know we're going to find out because I think he's going to get tossed into that role. Denver traded up for him last year. 
So Sean Payton clearly has some affection towards him. Unfortunately, he missed all of training camp due to a sports hernia injury. That really set him behind. They went with Damari Mathis, the second-year man at the time, out of pit. He sucked. Then they turned to Fabian Moreau last year, which really made me scratch my head. Like, is Riley Moss just the worst player in practice that you won't even consider starting him as the backup to replace Damari Mathis? So I've got questions, and I think we're going to get answers. I think Denver is going to pencil in Moss as this team's CB2, and if a rookie steals it from him in the training camp portion, so be it. But I think it's his job to lose right now. Now the safeties. Brandon Jones. I went with P.J. Locke over Caden Stearns. You don't have to twist my arm to flip-flop between those two, but I just feel like Locke ended the year, first off, healthy, which is unfortunate for Stearns, but that does give Locke a little bit of credit. And I think he ended it on a really high note where it's probably going to be his job to begin with. And we will probably see just a bunch of three safety looks and get a lot of Jones, Locke, and Stearns on the field all at once. J.L. Skinner, can he get some time on the field in special teams? Hopefully, DeLaron Turner Yell never sees the field defensively again. That Dolphins game was a disaster. Limit him to special teams. But for now, I'm going to go with Locke ahead of Stearns on this depth chart alongside Brandon Jones, who Denver gave a three year. $20 million contract to as a cheap replacement for Justin Simmons. So now I want you guys to rate the Broncos roster Madden style. Scale it 1 to 100. I would give this roster a 75. I feel like I'm probably even being a bit generous. Like, are we just going to ignore that Ben DiNucci and Jared Stidham are the quarterback battle to watch for? Like, as things stand right now, that alone is going to sink you a whole lot. The defensive line isn't really intimidating. The pass rush is okay, but it's not some clear-cut number one dog in that unit. You got some nice pieces on the offensive line. The wide receiver room is, you know, up and down in terms of, like, year-to-year consistency. So I think a 75 is honestly maybe even a bit generous for this team. All right, that will do it for us on this edition of the Broncos Breakdown. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed our content, consider subscribing down below.